everyone, welcome back to my channel. How are you? I hope you're all doing well. I'm doing great. The school holiday started today, which was something I was really looking forward to because I'm super tired and I definitely need some time to relax and chill. But anyhow, today I thought it would be fun to talk with you guys about my very first trip to Walt Disney World. I love Disney, I'm a huge Disney fan and last summer it was finally time to actually visit Walt Disney World and that was an amazing experience and I figured why not share my experience with you guys. If you're new here, hi my name is Juliette, I mostly talk about books but sometimes I talk about Disney and all kinds of other stuff that happen in my life. So if you like that type of content then I would suggest hit the subscribe button and I'm here with you guys every week for a new video. But anyway, let's talk about Walt Disney World. I figured it would be better for this video if I kind of divide everything in different topics. So we're going to talk about when we went, where we booked everything, the whole planning and how we planned, where we looked for all kinds of information, the packing, what I actually think is probably some essential things you really need when you go to Walt Disney World in the summer. And also just my full experience and how everything went and how we all experienced our very first time in Walt Disney World. I do really want to mention as well, or like put out a little bit of a disclaimer, that everything I'm going to say in this video is just my humble opinion. Like it was my very first time and this is really how we experience Walt Disney World. I can definitely understand if everyone else has a different experience, maybe also a different opinion about all kinds of things, but it's just... I kind of figured why not just share my experience. When we planned our trip, we also really relied on all kinds of information we were able to find on the internet about Walt Disney World. And we were also looking a lot for people who had their first experience and how everything was. And we mostly looked for YouTube videos as well. And I kind of figured why not share my own experience as well. Because maybe some of you can get like some tips or tricks out of this video or it's just really fun to watch i'm not entirely sure just let me know if you like this type of content and yeah let's get into it i would however also like to say that all these topics i'm going to talk about i'm kind of like generally going to everything because i also feel that all these topics kind of i could kind of make like a video about all of them to be honest so if you would be interested then let me know in the comment section down below as well because i could always make like more tips uh, or other videos about Walt Disney World and my very first experience as well. Now just get into it and let's start with when and where we booked. We visited Walt Disney World from July the 16th until August the 1st and during our stay we stayed at one resort in the Port Orleans Riverside and to be honest this resort was absolutely amazing. We loved it. We were all in awe of the resort. It was super relaxed, amazing extremely beautiful and just had like the best time at the resort. We were with four adults, my parents, my sister and I and we all shared just one room and I do feel that uh, the Riverside was perfect for that. It was a very big room, you had enough space to put your luggage like under the bed, you had a very big chest with all these type of drawers and it was just the perfect room to stay in. While we were at Riverside, we stayed in the Magnolia Bend building, but we really, really loved that building. It was super relaxed. We were very close to the river as well, and we were not that far from all the facilities. So I think it was a really perfect room to stay in. It was very close to the swimming pool, very close to the bus stop as well. So we didn't really have to walk that far for anything. We booked our trip in May 2023. So we kind of like booked it almost a year beforehand. And we did that after, well, trying to find information about Walt Disney World. We found a lot of information and tips that suggested you should at least book like a year beforehand. So we kind of did that as well to get like the best price for our stay in Walt Disney World. And I actually think that we had a very good deal uh, when we booked our trip. We had a couple of things included. We booked everything to the Walt Disney World website from, and then in Ireland. Dutch ourselves, we live in the Netherlands. And uh, I kind of realized that when we would book in Ireland, you would have like this very great deal where we were able to book like um, a 14-day ticket to visit all the parks, all the water parks, but just pay for seven days which was an amazing uh, deal, I think. And, uh, and we were also able to get a couple of things for free by booking uh, through that website and during that time. And we had a couple of things for free and I wrote it down. We had like the memory maker four times. So all of us had one memory maker. We also had a $200 gift card for merchandise or food. We were able to use it for anything we would like. And we also had like dining credits for $72 a night. 
which came down to $1,152. And we were actually able to pay for 25 meals during our stay for that uh, price. So that I think was amazing. And yeah, we just had a couple of things by booking it uh, there that were just really good deals during the time when we booked. I don't know how it is now because I haven't checked the website, but I do know that if you pay close attention to the Walt Disney World website, you have like pretty good deals throughout the year. And for us at the time, this was the best deal we could have. We went to Walt Disney World by plane, of course, um, especially since we live in the Netherlands, it's not that close to us. So we, have, we booked all our plane tickets uh, through the website Virgin Atlantic. We flew uh, from Amsterdam to Manchester and then from Manchester to Orlando MCU. The reason why we booked for both Walt Disney World uh, on the Walt Disney World website and for the airplanes on the Virgin Atlantic website was at that time it was the cheapest option for us. So that was kind of the reason why we choose those, those two websites to book our whole trip. If I had to book another Walt Disney World trip, I would definitely book it, I think, in the same way. Especially the Walt Disney World uh, stay and the tickets, the park tickets and everything. I felt it was amazing by booking it through the Walt Disney World website. It was, to be honest, I do feel that the Walt Disney World website is a little bit chaotic. I'm not the biggest fan of the layout of the website. And it was definitely hard to find a couple of things. Also, my... Disney experience, the account that you make, um, I don't know, I kind of feel you could do a lot and at the same time I also felt you couldn't really do a lot. But there were just a couple of things that were very hard to find and very hard to figure out. But in the end, after I did find and find everything and we figured out everything, I do feel that the website was pretty good. And something that I really liked as well, that we were able to check in on the app. Uh, and we were kind of able to manage and check everything uh, for our booking in just the Walt Disney World app. And that came really in handy while traveling as well. So if I had to book again, I would definitely book probably into the Walt Disney World website again. And I know around May you kind of have like pretty good deals. So I would definitely suggest try to book around that time and try to book as far as events if you can. For planning our trip, that kind of came down mostly to me and my sister. Um, we kind of booked everything and we planned everything my parents kind of just like tagged along and they were really trustworthy in us that we kind of would know what they liked and um well and in the end it kind of paid off thankfully to be quite honest when i first looked into a trip to walt disney world i was completely overwhelmed by how big it is like I live in the netherlands so the closest disney park we have is disneyland paris i also worked there for a couple of months so disneyland paris i know like the back of my hand like i i've been there so many times ever since i was born i i don't know how many times but i've been there a lot especially when i worked there there i would like spend my whole weekends in the parks but that is a lot smaller and we also visited disneyland in anaheim once but also that park is a lot smaller uh, than Walt Disney World. So when we were looking into our, our trip, we realized that there were so many things we had to figure out and so many information and it was so extremely overwhelming that we kind of first kind of gathered all the information and in the end I'm really really thankful for my sister because she kind of put all the information into this kind of travel family guide where she kind of put down everything like the flight details but also she kind of made a whole plan for each day to where to go what to do um, and we kind of did this well she mostly did work for that and but we kind of did this with all the information uh, that we gathered and I, I kind of helped her with it as well um, but there are so many things you have to pay attention to and take into account when going to Walt Disney World. And to kind of get all this information, the places that we mostly looked for me, especially I looked mostly at things like YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, but I love books. So of course I also used uh, two travel books, well not really travel guides, this is a real travel guide. This is more like an information informative guide about all the hidden treasures in Walt Disney World. And I kind of also read a couple of books. Like these two are the better ones that I read closest to our trip. And this is the one that I feel is actually the best, to be honest. I love this book. I took it with me in Walt Disney, to Walt Disney World. We used this a lot and for my parents as well it was amazing to kind of check out. It's all very clear in this book and I don't know, it was just a very informative, very easy to have, not that big, not that heavy to take with you in the parks.
So yeah, as I said, I use a lot of YouTube as well. So I'll put down a couple of YouTubers um, in the description box that I really loved to check out and get all my information off. And I really watched a lot of YouTube vlogs. I also watched a lot of videos like this, where people just talked about their experience, gave tips and tricks uh, for Walt Disney World as well. And that's kind of like how I got all our, our information and I kind of just put down everything and my sister worked it out into a little guide that we had with us as well. And when we were looking for the, all our information, we definitely paid more attention to uh, the days on when to go because you, ha because you can find a lot of information on when to visit Magic Kingdom, Animal Kingdom or even the water parks. And we definitely paid close attention to when it would be easier or better to visit those parks. But also for the attractions, when do we have to go to the Rise of Resistance, for example? We realized that the Rise of Resistance, you really have to go more towards the end of the day because, well, we're not that early rises. So we kind of, we didn't really make it to the parks at opening time. So we most of the time we are like during the day and in the uh, evening in the parks. And we definitely realized that Rise of the Resistance, I think the longest we waited there was like for 30 minutes. And that was the best time to visit those attractions where like at the end of the day. The same goes for the Avatar attractions and Pandora. It was amazing to go there to the end of the day because it was a lot quieter than during the day. We also of course checked the weather because to be honest Orlando or Florida the weather is very very strange and super different than we are used to here in the Netherlands. So yeah, especially when you see like rain clouds coming, like within 10 minutes it can start raining and it would just pour down. It would be like crazy how hard it would rain. I would definitely suggest you check the weather before you go to Flo uh, Florida. So now for the packing. I also got a lot of information for the packing through the social media website but, and also in the books, but mostly from my own experience when going to Disneyland Paris. I kind of know what to take with me when I visit in Disney Park. But for Walt Disney World, there are definitely a couple of things that I feel were, were really necessary in my backpack and I'm not going to mention the obvious one like sunscreen and a water bottle because I kind of feel that, that those things you definitely should take with you especially during the summer uh, when you go to Walt Disney World but for me mostly were little things like my phone cord I had this cord hanging around my neck or my arm where I could just hang my phone because especially in the summer I have a lot of summer clothes where I don't have any pockets that is something when you're in Walt Disney World your phone you need it you need it like to go almost everywhere and especially to track down the times for the attractions to track down the time for the shows and all the other stuff uh, your phone is really a necessity when you go to Walt Disney World uh, having it hanging around my neck it was a lot more easier to access it as well so that was something that I really felt was super necessary I bought it before our trip because I thought it would be well handy to have and in the end I kind of used it every day and I really couldn't go without and something else that I really couldn't go without were just simple wet wipes. You're very sweaty in the summer, especially if you're there. The, the weather is very humid. Like for for instance, a walk from uh, our hotel room to the bus, the water would just like run down your neck and everything. It was absolutely crazy. So wet wipes are very essential to just kind of like well clean yourself up from time to time. And I don't know, it was something that we really used a lot. Also deodorant, of course. And definitely take different shoes because I'm like one of those people that's always like yeah I don't need a lot of shoes and I kind of just took like my flip-flops with me uh, but in the end I do have to um, recommend I am going to recommend different type of shoes also just for your back for your legs for your feet when you go there you walk so much everything is so huge the whole resort is is enormous and the distances you're going to walk are definitely not going to compare what you walk in distant Paris or in distant Anaheim, for example. So you're going to walk a lot. And I know a lot of people will always warn you, you're going to walk a lot in Walt Disney World. And every time I looked at those videos, I was like, yeah, when I walk in Disneyland Paris, I walk a lot as well, so I'll be fine. But in the end, to be honest, I did have like some problems with my footwear. I would definitely suggest to take a different type of shoe wear with you as well. So if you have like blisters from a certain type of shoe, then you can like wear something else for the rest of the week or a couple of days until everything is healed back again. And a power bank. Like you have to bring a power bank because just as I said, you're going to use your phone a lot. 
Well, we did spend the majority of our time in the parks. So even though we did try to kind of like um, shift it a little bit and also have more time to relax, we still ended up spending quite a lot of the time during the day in the parks. So that also meant by using your phone, by taking pictures, making videos, sharing stuff on Instagram or social media, but also checking the rating times, all that stuff, the, your battery is going to get low. So you definitely need like a power bank and I would definitely suggest a good one as well. But to be honest, I could like make a whole video about everything that we packed because there were so many things that we needed while we were there. And also probably going to forget a lot, a lot of things. But to be honest, like the essentials, sunscreen, water, that's like the most essential thing that you need. And everything else, to be honest, don't take too many things with you in the park. At least that was something that I realized very quickly on. Uh, when I go to Disneyland Paris, we only go there for like a couple of days because it's very close. So we go there multiple times a year. Uh, but when we visited Walt Disney World as well, like in the beginning, I was like having my backpack completely full with everything I saw online that I had to take with me. So I like this backpack full of stuff and it was very heavy. But if you go there for like 16 days, you can't really walk around uh, with a backpack completely full of stuff for 16 days. At least I can't because my back is going to hurt. So I did try to kind of like shift in between taking different cameras with me um, and also just also have like days where I would only like bring my phone and a water bottle and be done with it because I didn't want to have anything else hanging on my back or whatever. So I would definitely think more about what you want to take with you. And yeah, you have like a lot of suggestions online about everything you have to pack and everything you have to take with you into the parks. But really think about what you need because we, for example, didn't go and change our shirts during the day. Like I know a lot of people always suggest like take a different t-shirt with you during the day, but we didn't really have to do that. Like we would come back um, like after the end of the afternoon and have like a little stay in our hotel room before we went for dinner or an evening trip to one of the parks. So that kind of meant that we were able to change when we were at the hotel again. But also like taking different footwear with you to the parks. I did that like for a couple of days, but to be honest, my backpack was kind of heavy by taking my sneakers with me in the parks as well. So that was something that I quickly stopped doing as well because it just takes a lot of room and also it weighs quite a lot. I kind of felt that during the trip my backpack became less weightier and I left a lot more stuff back in the hotel room just because, I don't know, it just, it's really warm. You don't really want to bring something with you in the parks that is super heavy. So I definitely feel that even though a lot of people are going to tell you you have to pack all kinds of things, just pack what you think is really necessary. But if you want to see a video about me packing for my Walt Disney trip or whatever, then just let me know. I am going to film like a uh, packing video for Disneyland Paris somewhere in uh, January, February, because we're going in February. So I'm going to upload around that time uh, a video about packing everything that I need or I take with me uh, on my Disneyland Paris trip in uh, the winter period. So yeah, just check that out when it comes. If you are curious for that as well, then I would definitely hit the subscribe button because I'm going to vlog my whole Disneyland Paris trip in February. But back to Walt Disney World, uh, my experience in Walt Disney World. And now I kind of just want to talk about all kinds of things. As I mentioned, we stayed in Riverside and Riverside for us was an amazing resort. It was just very quiet. It is definitely a lot less Disney atmospheric. So when you go there or when you stay there, you're kind of like taken out. You're not completely taken out of Disney magic, but it is not as Disney heavily decorated like the All Stars uh, Resort, for example, or Pop Century. It's a little bit, the decoration is a little bit more subtle, which I personally is more kind of my preferences. And yeah, we just had an amazing time. You have like this one big building where you have like all the facilities you need. The reception, the store, the place where you can get like your fast food in the food court and all that stuff and also a restaurant. So that was like very big and very, not that far actually from our hotel room. It was like less than a five minute walk. It was like two, three minutes and we were there 
from the Magnolia Band building until there. You also kind of like passed a big swimming pool because you had like multiple swimming pools at Riverside. You had like more the simple quiet pools and you had like one very big one where you also had a slide for the children and which was a little bit more themed. We really liked the quiet pools and we were really happy that you could kind of could like enter those pools as well after 11 o'clock or stay a little bit longer. Uh, so yeah, that was amazing having multiple pools because especially like on the busier days There's the main pool where the children's stuff is and everything it would be a little more busier and yeah, the quiet pools are very Very relaxed to have at Riverside you also have like multiple bus stops So that was something that was pretty amazing as well because especially when you had to take the bus But to be honest like when you got back from the parks, it was not always that fun because because we were like one of the last stops the bus comes before it leaves the resort. That mean also meant that when we came back to the resort, we had to stay in the bus for a very long time. Something you see a lot in Walt Disney World vlogs or videos about Walt Disney World is the magic band. And to be honest, we didn't use it. We didn't buy it at all. I kind of wanted to buy one. It was like on my to buy list when we went to Walt Disney World. Because I was also like, if I go there again, I really want to have a magic band. Because you saw, you see that so much in every video. We ended up not using a magic band or buying any. Because we just simply used the key to the world card. And this card is just, it's free. Like you can get this at the reservation desk from your resort. And you can just enter your room. You can enter the parks with this. And I really liked having this. Like at the same time, I get the easiness of having a magic band around your wrist. You don't have to get your wallet out of your backpack to get the key to the world card. But at the same time, we kind of save like, I think around 30 bucks for each of us for not buying a magic band. Like I know you could get them like for cheaper at the outlets, but at the same time, we did definitely like, I kind of felt we saved some money, especially because we really want to go back to Walt Disney World. I definitely have to wait before I have a new house or a new apartment or whatever uh, before I can afford another trip to Walt Disney World. So that won't happen again probably in the next one or two years. But still, I do feel that the Key to the World card is an, it's a very cheap option. And then I also think not everyone knows that you can actually just get this card for free at the reservation desk or at the reception desk uh, from your resort. And something that I really liked with that as well is you can also like use your phone to get into the parks or get into your room. But because you use your phone already for so many other things, I really like just having the key to the world card. And something I did as well quite a lot was putting my card in the back of my phone case. Because my phone was like hanging around my neck, I still had very easy access to this card. You could also like pay for stuff with this card as well. And then the money would be put on your room account. So yeah, it was just something that I didn't really know beforehand when we went there because a lot of vloggers always tell you to get a magic band and I definitely can see the reason why you should get one and I probably would get one if I would like go there more than once a year or maybe every year but at the same time the key to the world card it was for free so it was probably the easiest way for us for this time. So now for the busiest days of the parks. Like something you see a lot for Walt Disney World is how extremely busy the parks can get. And as I said before with the planning uh, portion of this video, uh, we use a lot of information from social media to know exactly which days to go to which park. And we kind of use that, but at the same time we didn't because we... Well, we didn't want to go to a park multiple times in one week so we kind of wanted to shift it around a little bit like go to Animal Kingdom, then Epcot, Magic Kingdom and so on and so on and we kind of wanted to shift it around a little bit more. I'm sorry, Sissy is asking a lot of attention at the moment so yeah you have probably heard her walking around and making a lot of noise at the moment but she just really really wants my attention. She just have to wait a little while longer. Anyhow, I was talking about the business of the parks. Uh, like we had this whole schedule made beforehand and in the first week we definitely paid attention to which park to go first. However, as soon as we got there, we really wanted to go to Magic Kingdom first. So we ended up going on a day that kind of was mentioned as a busy day for Magic Kingdom. But overall, I kind of felt that during our stay, especially we were there from the 16th of July until the 1st of August. Like towards the end of July, like for the last four or five days, the parks were slowly starting to get a lot busier. 
but overall during our stay it was very good like the busy it was not that busy i think the longest we were waiting for an attraction was like 60 minutes and that was for the for the avatar boat ride the navari river i think it's called so that was like one of the attractions we had to wait very long for uh, but overall it was not that busy i think we had a lot of great places for the fireworks show or for the parade or all the stuff as well we didn't really have to wait that long for food either and i have to admit as well when it came down to food we we're also very easy people so as soon as we came to a restaurant or a place that was very busy we'll be like okay we're not waiting there we're going somewhere else and that kind of helped us along the way as well and we also didn't eat a lot in restaurants we kind of like picked stuff up at some kiosk or somewhere else and just have a nice sit somewhere in the park and just eat our stuff there uh, so yeah it was it was busy but overall i definitely feel that when we went that time period was perfect and it was not as busy as sometimes you see around on social media sometimes you see like these big enormous crowds but we didn't really experience that during the time and something else i would like to mention is when it starts to rain people leave the parks you shouldn't stay in the park we kind of like stayed while it was raining well after the rain the parks are super quiet and the wait times kind of have dropped a lot more we didn't have a lot of rain though like it was more towards the end of our trip as soon as like it was starting to get a little bit busier uh, for the last days of july and the first day of august as well um towards the end of our trip it was also starting to rain a little bit more but overall the weather was extremely fine and i kind of feel that we we're able to dodge the rain a lot and uh, by just planning shows around the time that it was going to rain or uh, stay in the hotel or kind of um i don't know we, we kind of planned it pretty well and it also didn't rain every day we were there it kind of just started to rain for the last five six days and it kind of slowly got worse and worse each day and when it started raining a lot of people when they left we just stayed in the parks and that was uh, something that was very convenient for us because then the wait times would drop a lot and we were able to get into a lot of attractions by just walking in there without having almost any wait time at all something that i do want to mention is the transport because in Walt Disney World the biggest part of the transport is by bus or you can also get like a minivan, an Uber. Uh, we also were able to take the water taxi because we stayed at Riverside. So we could like take the water taxi to, um, uh, to Disney Springs, which was actually amazing. We really, really loved that. But the bus rides, to be honest, I didn't really like it at all. Uh, mostly because like you have in the app, you, have, you are able to check the bus times. And our experience was that every time we checked the bus times in the app, it didn't match up in reality. I think it was like only for the first day or something, it kind of like matches a little bit. But we had quite a lot of times that the bus didn't come at the time uh, it said in the app. So we still had to wait for a very long time. And something that we did realize, and I don't know why, and I don't know if this is something that is just something that occurred during our stay but when we we're staying in uh, riverside the bus to hollywood studios doesn't come that quite frequently not when compared to the animal kingdom bus or uh, the bus to magic kingdom and even epcot because for the hollywood studios bus uh, but every time we wanted to go to hollywood studio we had to wait extremely long for the bus i think the longest we waited was almost 30 minutes and we even waited one time so long that we actually ended up going to a different park because it was the bus was just not coming and i don't know if that is something that was just something that happened to us when we stay there and it is not a normal occurrence but that's something that was really annoying us sometimes but overall the bus is were great and it was very spacious we didn't have a lot of trouble uh, taking the bus mostly only when we went wanted to go to hollywood studios and something that was also very easy was just getting an uber we also went to the outlets at universal when we stayed in walt disney world and just getting an uber was very easy in the resort as well we just had to go uh, to the main entrance of the building and the uber would pick us up there and it was not that expensive as a lot of people say they, uh, it is like we also took like the uber from the orlando mcu to the resort because we didn't end up buying bus tickets the reason for that was we realized it was probably a little bit cheaper 
with just the four of us taking one Uber. And it really was, I think it was like $10 each, so it was not that expensive. As for food and drinks in the parks and in the resorts, I think you have a lot and a lot of variety. I also feel that, especially if you do not have any diet wishes, uh, if you do not have to pay uh, attention to what you eat, you can eat a lot of different things in the parks or uh, in the resort, especially in Epcot. I think there the food was probably the best of all the parks. In Hollywood Studios, I kind of felt that you did not have a lot of choice when it came down to food and what you wanted to eat. But however, overall, I felt that you had like a very good and amazing variety and we didn't really have to wait that long. We didn't use mobile order once. Every time we went into the restaurants, a lot of people would be standing at the mobile pickup uh, where, you can, where you go when you order your food on your mobile phone. But just the cash desk, the regular cash desk was almost every time it was just empty. So we would just like walk to that cash desk and choose our food and go and sit down very easily. Normally it would take like maybe 10 minutes max before we're sitting down and eating. So I would definitely suggest like just check out the restaurant before you choose the mobile order because you, you don't really have to use your mobile to order the food. For me, because I have irritable bowel syndrome, I really have to pay attention to what I eat. I can't eat fries, for example. I can't eat anything that is too spicy, too salty, too oily or anything. I, I simply can't eat a lot of things or drink for that matter as well because I can't drink regular Coke or anything that has like gas in the drink. So that definitely meant for me that I was not really able to eat as varied as uh, my parents and sister could eat. I kind of had to go for the cheese salad most of the time. So I definitely ate a lot of different cheese salads. Uh, but in the end it did get a little bit boring. But that being said, that was just because I have like a different diet. Uh, so if you, as I said before, do not have anything to pay attention to or what you eat or drink, you can definitely have a lot of different th things to eat when you're there. And I also really, really love the food court at Riverside. At the food court at Riverside you have so many things to choose from. To be honest, after our, because we stayed there for a pretty long time, we definitely had like some of our favorites. Uh, we hardly ever had to wait very long for there as well. And just, you definitely can eat very healthy in Walt Disney World as well. That was something that I didn't really know. But you can, uh, especially at the food court, you were able to get different salads. Also a lot of fruit or yogurt. So you had like a lot of very healthy options as well. And we, especially I, used that a lot. But if you're staying at a Disney resort and you're staying for a longer time, and I would definitely think like if you're staying like longer than five days, I would recommend a refillable mug. This is the refillable mug I got this summer, which is super cute, really amazing. And I still use this a lot at home. It definitely keeps your drink very hot and very cold for a very long time. So it's still really easy to have this in the house as well. You, If you buy that, it's like $21, I think, out of the top of my head. And you're able to kind of like get your free refills in your Disney Resort. Not only in the Disney Resort you're staying yourself, but you can also take it to Animal Kingdom Lodge or somewhere else, uh, wherever you go. As long as you have that, you can kind of like get free refills in all the Disney, Walt Disney World resorts. And I actually thought it was great. We used it so much. We used it to get coffee, to get tea, to have like all types of sodas as well during the day or just really cold water. It was just, yeah, I think it was an amazing thing to have, especially if you stay for a very long time. Drinks are very expensive in Walt Disney World. So I definitely felt that having that with you, you kind of saved a lot of money, especially if you stay for a longer period on the resort. When we actually went to the parks, we didn't really buy a lot of drinks as well. If we bought like a drink, we uh, buy one and share it with each other. But most of the time we didn't really need a drink because we had like a bottle of water. So that was that's also a way to kind of like save money by not having to buy any anything to drink because you have like your bottle of water. And there are like free spots uh, to refill your bottle of water everywhere around as well. And something that you can do as well is ask just for free water at all the restaurants in the parks. You can just go there, ask for water, you don't have to stand in line for it. And you get like a nice cup filled with water and ice for free. So that's something you don't have to pay for at all. So definitely pay, take that in mind if you kind of want to save some money. 
So yeah, that's kind of like my overall experience of Walt Disney World. And I think I talked about a lot of different things. I really hope you got some tips out of this video. And if you would like to know more, if you would like to me to make different content about Walt Disney World as well, just let me know in the comment section down below what you would like to see of what you would like to talk about with me as well. Yeah, I really hope you liked this video. And if you did, then please give this video a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button. And then I think I'll see you guys again next week. See you then. Bye bye.